All right. Um, today we'll be working on lesson five of unit eleven and six. In this lesson, we're going to use another application of the least common multiple. So remember how to get the least common multiple. Basically, you, the least common multiple has to have everything. If you got like two things, you got it's got to have everything that the first thing has and everything the second thing has okay so um we're going to use them to solve equations now unfortunately just like absolute value just like square root just like logarithms they all have those all have the possibility of extraneous solutions unfortunately that's true with these more specifically it's a certain algebraic move that we make that can create extraneous solutions. That includes multiplying on both sides, exponentiation, or condensing a logarithm more likely, uh, removing absolute values, squaring both sides, things like that. Um, that's the same thing that happened here. Now, testing these answers can be quite tedious. Sometimes yeah, they're easy. You plug them in, you see, okay, it makes the equation true or not, not that hard. Other times the arithmetic can actually be quite intense. So the good news is, as long as you're confident about the steps you did, you should not get an extraneous solution unless that solution makes a denominator of zero. So looking at this equation, if we were to solve this equation and get two answers, let's say five and zero, I don't actually have to plug them in to see if they make both sides true. I mean, that's certainly, if you can do it, that's a good idea. Um, I just have to see if they make a denominator zero. And clearly, uh, zero would be bad here. You know, uh, maybe a better example would be to look at letter B. Um, there are two answers that if I get them, they're extraneous. If I get six or one, six would make this zero. And I can't divide by zero. And one would make that zero. So that's all we have to look out for with extraneous solutions is does it make any of my denominators equal to zero? And if it does, you got to call it extraneous. All right. So here's the steps. First, you find the least common multiple of your denominators. Then you multiply all, all both sides by it good news is we've been doing this all year we just haven't been doing it with letters there's only one denominator here and it's an x so we're going to multiply both sides by x and i distribute x times 5 over x always divide first x divided by x is 1 and 1 times 5 is 5 x times 2 is 2x and 3x times x is 3x squared All right, now I just set everything equal to zero. Okay. I do that because of the x squared. Now I factor. And unfortunately, not all of these are going to be factorable. Sometimes we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So I'll put x and then we'll do minus 5. Mm, no, that's not going to be right. We're going to do a minus 5 here and a plus 1 here. There we go. So the solutions are, if I set this equal to 0, 5 thirds and negative 1. Neither negative 1 nor 5 thirds gives me a 0 in the denominator of a fraction, so I'm good. These wouldn't be too difficult for us to check. Specifically, the negative 1 is pretty easy. 5 divided by negative 1 plus 2 is negative 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So it would be fine. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Okay, so when we're finding the least common multiple, we want to factor first. That's how you find the least common multiple is to look at its factors. So this is 10 over x minus 6, x minus 1 equals 3 over x minus 6. I'm going to make that plus a negative. Just like that. Okay, so after factoring, we can see that our least common multiple is just x minus 6 times x minus 1. All 
Okay, uh, when I multiply here, they x minus 6 and x minus 1 cancel out, leaving me just 10. When I multiply over here, x minus 6 cancels, so I have 3 times x minus 1 which I'll go ahead and distribute, if that's okay with you, to 3x minus 3. Then here, when I multiply times this term, the x minus 1s cancel, and I get negative 2x plus 12. Okay? Well, that's just a linear equation, so I just need to combine like terms and solve. Uh, let's see here, what is that? x plus 9? Yeah. So x equals 1. But look at the original problem. It had an x minus 1 in the denominator. If I plug a 1 in, I get undefined. So this is extraneous. So our solution set is the empty set. Or you could say no solution. Or even this symbol. This symbol means that. No solution. Any one of those three things just indicate that you've considered the one and that you know that it does not work. All right, let's take a look at another example together. First step. What do I do first? Yeah, got a factor. And I bet you can guess that it factors the x minus 5, x minus 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 5 times x minus 2 because that is the least common multiple of all three denominators. Okay. Here the x minus 5s cancel out. And I'll multiply 4x times x minus 2 gives me 4x squared minus 8x. On this one here, the x minus 5 and x minus 2 cancel out entirely, so I get just 3. And then on this one, the x minus 2s cancel, and 1 times x minus 5 is just x minus 5. Okay, so I've got an x squared. I need to set it equal to 0. Hopefully it factors. Again, I'm warning you, they're not always going to factor in this unit, though. Uh, 4x squared, let's see here, minus 9x. Plus 2? Yeah, that looks like that factors, though, because I can do 4x and x minus 2 and minus 1. That gives me a negative 8x, minus 1x is negative 9x, and plus 2. So our answers are x equals 2 and x equals 1 fourth. However, the x equals 2 is not okay because it makes that denominator zero. So that doesn't work, that one's extraneous. We do have one solution though, one fourth. All right, so I've got A, B, C for you to try, please. Give that, give that a go, Let's see how you do. All right, let's see how we did. On practice 5.1a, we're gonna multiply both sides by 5x because that's the least common multiple of 5x and 5, which will give me 6 minus 5x squared equals 7x. Because I have an x squared, I need to set it equal to 0, and hopefully I can factor it. So if I do 5x and x, and I do 2 and 3, this will give me a plus 10x on the outside product, minus 3x on the inside, so 7x. So it gives me x equals 3 fifths and x equals negative 2, neither of which give me a 0 in the denominator. So they should both work as long as I did my algebra correctly. All right. Letter B. So if we factor this one here to be x plus 2, x minus 1, you can see that uh, I have a least common multiple of x plus 2 and x minus 1. So I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by that. All right, when I multiply this 
times this part, the x minus 1s cancel out, and I have just an x plus 2. When I multiply it times this part, the x plus 2s cancel out, and I get x squared minus x. All right, on this side here, the x plus 2 and x minus 1 completely cancel out, leaving me with just 6. I'll now set this equal to 0. And I believe the x's cancel, and I get x squared minus 4, which factors as x minus 2, x plus 2. I could also use square roots. Just be sure you use plus or minus when you take a square root. So I get x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. The negative 2 is not allowed. It's extraneous. But the positive 2 is OK, because the negative 2 would make a 0 in the denominator of b, of uh, the original equation for part b. All right, on letter C, I'm going to factor the denominator and get x minus 3, x plus 3, and then x minus 3. The least common multiple is x minus 3, x plus 3. So those completely cancel out, leaving me 10 is equal to x squared plus 3x, because those cancel out, and x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. So I set it equal to 0. And this one factors as well. So we're so far, we're looking out. x plus 5 and x minus 2. So I get x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 2. Neither give me a 0 in a denominator, so they both work. You might recognize that letter C is what we call a proportion. A proportion is when you say that two fractions are, or rational numbers, I should say, are equivalent. So this is not a proportional because it proportion because it has two fractions added to another fraction. But this is. Now, many students learn a technique called the cross product. And the cross product is something you can use in this class as well, but you don't want to over apply it. So for example, the last problem we did, the cross product would actually make that problem harder. But we're ready to f understand what it is and know when to use it. So the property called the cross product says that if I have two proportions, a over b equals c over d, then the product of a times d is equal to c times b. And just putting down some numbers can confirm that this is absolutely true. So suppose I had the fraction 3 sevenths and another fraction uh, 6 fourteenths. I hope you agree that those two fractions are definitely equal, right? Well, if they are, then their cross product should be the same. So if I multiply 3 times 14, that'd be 30 plus 12, that's 42. That must be equal to 7 times 6 which is also 42. So experienced Algebra 2 students, though, should recognize that this is really nothing more than a special case of multiplying by the LCM. Your junior high math teacher really needed you to be able to do the cross product. So they probably told you stuff, maybe even drew a butterfly over it or something like that, right? And they call it the butterfly method or, or multiply, cross multiply and divide right? Um, that's because they need you able to solve those problems, but you didn't necessarily need you to understand why it worked. Well, the least common multiple of B and D is BD. So if I put BD here and here, you'll notice that the D's cancel out, leaving me with B times C, and the B's cancel out, leaving me with A times D. So the, the cross product is nothing more than just a result of multiplying by the least common multiple. So we can certainly use the, else, the, the cross product to easily solve some proportions. But we want to be really careful that we don't overuse it. So do not use it if you have something that has to be factored. Okay? So, for example, B, I don't want to cross product that. I want to factor first. But on an easy one like A, this is perfect for the cross product. Let's just multiply these two things together. And I'll actually do it in two steps for our notes here, so you can see what I did. The cross product tells me that this must be so. Oh, I put equals, I meant 
times. That's it. I'll make it into a big parenthesis. There we go. All right. So now I'll foil each side. And I've got an x squared, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'll subtract an x squared. That's 4x minus 3x is 1x. That's 5x. 1x minus 5x is a negative 4x. I've got a negative 6 and a negative 6 over here. Add them together to go away. So it's just that. Factor out an x. x equals 0. x equals 4. Neither of them give me zero in the denominator. You might be a little scared of this x equals zero, but notice when I plug it in, it'll become negative one and two, so it's fine. So the cross product made that problem pretty easy, or, well, easier. But on letter B, if you try and use the cross product here, you're going to get, like, x cubes and stuff. Yuck, we don't want that, okay? So instead, we're going to factor first, and hopefully... Um, there's a factor in common. In most application problems where we see these, this happens that way, like in calculus and stuff. So usually this is the case. There we go. Um, so the least common multiple is x minus 4 times x plus 1. x plus 1 cancels out here. And I'm left with x minus 4 times x minus 3, which is x squared minus 7x plus 12. Here, everything goes away, and I'm left with just 2x squared minus x. I'll then set this equal to 0. And I'm not feeling like that factors, does it? Uh, no. Uh, plus 12 here, and I subtracted it over. Yeah. Okay. So, just making sure I didn't make a mistake, right? Okay. So, here we go. X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. 36 plus 48. Oh, 84. So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 84. The square root of 84, let's simplify that. Uh, that's 4 times, I think, 21, which is 3 times 7, which is 2 times 2. So it's 2 root 21. All over 2. So negative 3 plus the square root of 21 when I divide each term by 2. And negative 3 minus the square root of 21. Maybe get that a little higher up there. And clearly, none of those give me a zero in the denominator, so uh, that is good. All right, uh, so what I want you to do is to practice a few more problems. If you can use the cross product, do so. I think one of them you can. If you can't, no worries. <laughs> give it a try. Okay, uh, let's, <clears throat> let's work through these last little practice problems. This one here is perfect for the cross product. 7 times 7 is 49. x times 4x is 4x squared. Um, I would just set this equal to 0 and factor the difference of two squares. You could use square roots if you prefer. Just make sure that you do it properly. So 7 over 2 and negative 7 over 2, neither of which make that denominator 0, so we're good. All right, on the next one, it's already factored for us. We just need to multiply by the least common multiple of x times x minus 5. Or I wouldn't say it's factored, but it's it doesn't need factoring. All right, when I multiply this to the first term, the x's cancel, so I have 2 times x minus 5 is 2x minus 10. 
Here, um, I like to make that plus a negative. That helps me. The x minus 5s cancel. I have a negative 1 times x is a minus x. On this side, the x minus 5s cancel. It's just 3x. This is not a difficult question here because it's just a linear equation. No need to worry about factoring or anything like that. So x equals negative 5, which is okay. Negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. So we're good. All right, we'll take a look at uh, letter C now. This one does need a little bit of factoring, not too much. I'll make that plus a negative 1 over x times x plus 1. And I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCM, which is x and x plus 1. Okay, here the x's cancel, and I get 5 times x plus 1 is 5x plus 5. Here, everything cancels, so it's just a minus 1. Here, the x plus 1's cancel, and x times x is x squared. Due to the fact we got an x squared, we need to set this equal to 0. That's 4. Uh, minus 4 makes this uh, a negative 4. Uh, so that's not... That's not going to factor. So x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All over 2a. 25 plus 16 is 41. Right? So x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 41. And well, 41 I think is prime. So nothing I can do with that. So my answers are 5 plus the square root of 41 over 2 and 5 minus the square root of 41 over 2. And we'll just trust that that's right. That would be quite difficult to, to work through checking that one. But it doesn't make a denominator 0, so we're good. All right, you might be tempted to try cross product on D because it's a proportion, but you do not want to do that because of this big nasty thing here. We want to just use our least common multiple for sure. So 2x and x, uh, well, I'm betting this is a minus 5 here and a plus 1. Let's see. Positive 2x minus 5x, negative 3x, good. So the least common multiple is just 2x minus 5 times x plus 1. The 2x minus 5s cancel out, and I'm left with x minus 2. Over here, everything cancels out. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot the x plus 1 as well. Um, that's okay. I can fix it. Just do that. There we go. Uh, on the right, everything cancels out, though. Okay, uh, foil this. x squared minus 2x plus 1x is a minus x. Minus 2 equals negative 2x. Add the 2x over. You see a plus x minus 2 equals 0. So I get x equals negative 2, and x equals 1. And, yeah, that, that, they both work. Uh, this x plus 1 would not mess that up, so we're good. All right, and that is pretty much it for lesson 5.